welcome back. This next stitch is called spider's web stitch. And if you've ever done any dorset cross wheel buttons, it's the same stitch as is used for those. You can do it with any number of spokes and I've drawn a wheel here. I'm using eight in this button here. I've used 10 and in this one, there are 12. So as long as they're an even number of spokes, that's fine. So I'd start six, eight, 10, 12, that sort of number is what you want. So let's move those out of the way. I've drawn a larger one here and I think I'll do another one there, might even do another one in that place there. So the first thing you need to do is lay your spokes. I'm using my cruel needle and I'm going to take eight stitches into the center. It doesn't matter what order you do the stitches in. So you're coming up on the outside of the wheel and going down into the center with your stitches. The lines you don't, are obviously just for guidance, you don't have to have them. And with all these stitches going into the center, it fixes the center so that it doesn't move about. You'll see what I mean when we start to do the weaving. Try and make your centre as neat as you can. Okay. And now you want to come up anywhere as close to the centre as you can get without piercing the thread and in between the spokes. So I'm coming up on top of this one below that one. And now I'm going to change my needle to a tapestry needle for weaving. So the tapestry needle is one with a blunt end. If you don't have a tapestry needle, you can use the eye of your needle and go in like that. But ideally change it to a tapestry needle. I've changed to my tapestry needle now and I've come up, as we said, between these two spokes. So I'm going to go back under that one and also under the next one. So the one behind and the one in front and then under the one that I've just come up above and under the next one. Careful not to pierce these spokes under that one and under the next one. So you're almost going back on yourself. You've come up between these two spokes here and you're going back. And you'll need to keep turning your work. I'm trying to keep it still here in the picture. So under one and under the next one. Under that one and under the next one. So you're always going under two. One of them is the one that you've just come up. So I've come up above that one, I'm going below it and under the next one. I'll show left-handers how to start on the smaller wheel. You basically weave in the other direction. And you can see that it would be easier for you if you turn your work around as you got to the bottom. I'm just doing it a little bit cack handed so that it stays stationary for you.
and you're going to continue around until you've completely filled the spokes. So I'll do a bit more and then we'll look at what it looks like when it's almost done. Another thing to say is don't ever start these with a small piece of thread. Ideally, you want to do the whole thing with one piece of thread because it's harder to just start and stop. If you do need to stop, just take your needle down into the fabric, finish it off and remember where to come up. So you've got to come up in the same place. So I've got quite a long way now with my spider's web. So I've got quite a long way now with my spider's web, but I'm still going to pack a few more stitches in. So as long as you've got a little bit there at the top of those prongs, pack them in. The more you pack them in, the more this centre bit will sit up. You can use these for the centres of flowers, do them really small. Um, it's a lovely little stitch to do and it, and it actually grows quite quickly. So I still want to pack some more in. When you do your prongs to start with, it's important that they're they're quite tight. Obviously, you don't want to pull the fabric because if they're loose, your little ridges will go out of shape. So make them make them nice and tight. If you find that one stitch is longer than another, then you can you can just do a little bit maybe at the top or a little bit at the bottom and finish on the uh, at the other place so let's see if we can get a bit further and i'll show you what i mean i've actually had to change my thread so you're lucky if you can do it all in one just remember where you finished off I'm st I've still got room, especially here at the top. Keep keep going as long as you can. Once it starts to feel tight, then you know you're there. I keep having to change hands so that I can avoid turning it round so that you can see it. It's getting tighter now, so I'm nearly there. Be careful that you don't pierce the fabric underneath 
when you get this far. I can almost not get one in there. I've got a bit more space here at the top. Might get one more down in there. There we go. And now, if you feel you need some more at the top, I'm actually going to take my thread to the top, bring it up there, and just do another stitch at the top. So if you feel it needs it, you can do that. And then when you think you've finished, take your thread underneath the little wheel and finish it off at the back. So I'm just going to show left-handers how to start with this little wheel here. And I'll probably do another, another little one there as well, because they're quite nice to do. As a left-hander, you're going to go around the wheel clockwise. I've just done six spokes on here because um, it's a small circle, so it's easier to, to see. So come up in between any of the spokes and then go back under the, under the one underneath and under the next one. Struggling with this. And then back under the one that you've just come up under and then under the next one. Try not to pierce your split back stitch as you go, which is what I've just done. So back under that one and under the next one. back under that one and under the next. I think you'll find that's a more natural way for you to do it. And as you can see, it's not really the most natural way for me to do it, but I hope that will help you to get started. And obviously keep turning your work. I can't do any more um, stitches now without doing it with my right hand so I'd have to go like that. You might find you can do it the other way. Um, I think more natural for you is to go clockwise like that. So I will finish this one off uh, left-handed and then I'm going to do one more and then we'll do the next stitch. I've completed my three little spider's web wheels here and I've just popped a little French knot in the centre. A couple of wraps on these two and one wrap on the smaller one because I found this little flower basket I'd like to show you. So here you can see that I've used the spider's web to make little flowers and they've got tiny, tiny French knots in the centre. So that's one example of how you can use this stitch. Next, we're going to do some seeding.